Around two days ago, John Laporta did state that Barcelona are doing well and in a very competitive state. He was responding to the backlash that was being given to the club and to John Laporta, especially because many people in Madrid think that Barcelona were paying the refs and that there's this whole case that should be shown against them. And John Laporta was stating that everybody's hating, Madrid is hating because Barcelona are doing well sportingly, financially, and we're showing that we can bring out great gems coming from La Mesilla thanks to the implementation of Deco, Xavi Hernandez, and Bojan. He says something like that, but he really wanted to reference how well La Mesilla is doing and how many players are coming out. And the reason why I want to start this video like this is because what Joan Laporta stated on that moment is 100% true today. Because today, we do see another gem coming through La Mesilla and into the first team, and the name is Mark Guyu. Now, I don't know if I butchered that name. I don't know if I said that name incorrectly or correctly, but we're gonna just go by Mark. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. But Mark is the player that scored against Athletic Club and brought Barcelona the three points. And at just 17 years old, he was able to score his first goal in the first team within a span of 22 seconds. Like he was substituted into the match and scored 22 seconds later. Can you believe that? At just 17 years old. Like, I don't know. I feel like within this past year, Barcelona have been so blessed in terms of how many players that have been showing up for the first team that are coming from La Mesilla. We are truly blessed. We haven't seen Barcelona act like this in so long in terms of how well we can represent La Mesilla. We brought in Fermin Lopez. We brought in Marc Guyu. La Minyamal has also shown up. And about two years ago, we also had Gavi coming in, Alejandro Valde also coming in. And we know what the future does hold. Like in a couple of months, we're going to be seeing Mikhail Faye, Noah Darvich also coming in eventually, maybe in this season. There's so many players that are blossoming in the academy and also the players that are coming to the academy and into the first team. So if you guys are like Barcelona fans, you guys should be very excited, like really rejoice this moment because the future of Barcelona, it is in safe hands and it's so exciting. So going back into this game, right? Barcelona, again, they have achieved the three points. They won against Athletic Club 1-0 and it wasn't like the most beautiful game that Barcelona have played, but they did what they could. They got the job done. I think that Joao Felix was one of the best players on this night, being the main driver in the attack. He was really the, the protagonist. Besides Mark, I know that he is making the headlines right now, but I want to shout out Joao Felix because he created so many chances. He drove the ball forward. He gave the assist to Mark and it was an amazing pass. And so you can see that Joao Felix was really trying to bring the three points to Barcelona. All of the energy was on him. Another player that I think did very well was Gavi. Gavi was the one that as soon as he got into the middle of the pitch and he was playing right next to Gundogan, we started to see the Gavi that we saw before the international break. A very physical player, a player that's able to retain the ball, never lose the ball, drive the ball forward, making the correct passes at the correct moment. When you play as Gavi as a central defensive midfielder, you get the best version of him. And of course, you know, when you have those two players playing so well, Athletic Club were being very physical because they were getting annoyed by those two players because of how well they were playing. Like, for example, we should have been given a penalty in the first half when Joao Felix was fouled inside the box around the 14th minute. You can see on this video here that this should have been a penalty, but it wasn't called for whatever reason. The fact that Joao Felix was getting fouled, and I believe he was the most fouled player on this game, and just constantly being marked, it just shows you that Joao Felix was on fire because he was able to arrive inside the box in the correct moments, receiving the ball between the lines, making the correct passes. It was a joy to watch him tonight. And so I really just want to get this out there. Barcelona had to play against Athletic Club, a very strong side, by the way. And we knew that a lot of our players were out. We did not have Lewandowski. We did not have Araujo starting. We did not have Frankie De Jong, Pedri. Rafinha wasn't there. Jules Koundé was also not there. We had, we had a lot of our players out, like our A game players, our, our main players that make this team tick. They were not there. And the fact that we had our youth players come into this match and showcase what they could do and, and deliver a, a result, this was a great game. There, uh, like I have said, was it a perfect game, a beautiful game, a game that I would say should have ended 5-0? No, but they did what they could. They did all right for, for you know, for a team that was very young, a team that did not have a lot of experience. We got the job done. And I, I really want to emphasize on that because I think that with this B team that we showed case against Athletic Club, we can build on top of this. These players can get so much better. So really think about this, right? We had a total of 12 shots while Athletic Club had 10. We had seven shots on target while Athletic Club had three. We had three big chances and Athletic Club only had zero. We created enough chances with a very young squad and, and a very inexperienced squad. And we also held 62% of the possession. So one of the things that really did bother me about the match, besides like pointing out all of the good things, was Oreo Romeo. I don't think that Oreo Romeo is really bringing out his best, best performances as of late. He is really showing that he has some weaknesses in his game. Like he had a great debut, don't get me wrong. In the first two months when Barcelona started their season, he was really, really solid. We're like, okay, this guy is over exceeding his expectations. But as we go deeper and deeper into the season, you're starting to see the flaws that he does have. Like for example, every time he does receive 
receive the ball, the opposition know exactly what to do next, and that is by pressing the player as hard as they can, and Odio Romeo loses the ball. He's not press resistant. He's not a player that is capable to be in possession, and it, and it hurts Barcelona a lot, like a lot. Like, like Sergio Busquets was the player that we depended on the most. Every time we had a player in the middle receiving the ball, Sergio Busquets was the one that we relied on because he did not lose the ball. But with Odio Romeo, we lost the ball a lot, and Barcelona had to suffer. And so do I think that Odio Romeo is a great ball winner? Of course, he's great when we don't have the ball. But when we do have the ball, I know that it is something that bothers Xavi. And I think that another reason why Odio Romeo is suffering so much is because Frankie is not there. Frankie was the one that retained the ball. He was the one that was supposed to receive the ball always in the middle of the pitch with Odio Romeo backing him up if Frankie does lose the ball. That was the reason why he showcased his best version of himself in the first two months is because Frankie was there. But because Frankie is not there, Odio Romeo is just almost like nothing. And that's a problem because we can't have a player in the middle of the pitch that depends on having another player there in order for him to perform well, if that makes sense. And so because he showed those weaknesses, that is one of the reasons why Gundogan had to sit a little deeper and position himself much deeper in this game is because he had to help Odio Romeo. And Xavi knew this very well. And that's another thing that really bothered me was the fact that Gundogan had to sit deeper and Gundogan is much better as an eight than a six. And we needed that creativity up top when we were suffering in the first 64 minutes. Thanks to Draw Felix though, he really like stood up and showcased what he could do in the last 20 minutes. Basically what I referenced earlier in this video, Dra Felix was able to step up and bring Barcelona to a much higher level. But I felt like we could have put this game away earlier if Gundogan was playing as a number eight with Dra Felix. And so here are going to be my top three best players for this match. Number one will be Gavi. Number two would also be Dra Felix. And lastly, I do want to shout out Mark, the 17 year old La Messia gem. And based off what I have heard regarding how he does play and what he showed against Athletic Club, he's a very traditional number nine. He's not a number nine that knows how to play on the left wing or on the right wing. He's very, I would say, one dimensional, right? right? Like he's really good at what he does and he definitely does have some weaknesses. Like you cannot see him go into Ansu Fati's position or in Dembele's position and expect him to provide an assist or provide in a goal. He is a true, true traditional number nine and only that, right? He's not like a versatile player like Julian Alvarez and you can place him as a number 10 or a left winger or a right winger. Mark is a true number nine, a player that knows how to score a lot of goals. There's a reason why he has been progressing through the academy, going through Juvenal A, all the way into the B team and from the B team to the first team within a couple of months. He knows what he can do. And that is the reason why he was called up into the squad list and the reason why he did score. He's very powerful, very physical, very good in the air. When you give him a lot of space, he will score those goals for you. So give him the right environment, surround him around the best players and he will score you the goals. Just know that if you find him on the left wing, right wing, or as a number 10, you won't get the true best out of the player. Very much like Lewandowski, but I will say much more energetic and with much more speed. And so that is it. That is going to be wrapping up today's video. Let's go Barcelona. Barcelona is in third place, one point behind Real Madrid and Girona. And so now our next match is going to be against Real Madrid on Saturday. And if we beat Real Madrid on Saturday and Girona lose points, we will claim first place in La Liga. So let's do this. Let's go with all the power that we can. There's there's a reason why Xavi Hernandez placed a starting 11 like this with La Mina Mal, not in the starting 11 or Araujo, also resting players like Frankie, Pedri. You can expect to see a lot of those players return for the match against Real Madrid, where it's going to be mattering the most. So again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.